Minecraft's most popular survival map, Skyblock, is nothing but a block in the sky, a tree, and some basics to help you get along the way. And in a throwback to my original 100 days video, we are going to survive 100 days in this world. We are also all in hardcore, meaning if we die, we stay dead. Can the three of us survive to the end? I guess you'll have to watch the video and find out. Guys, it's been an amazing almost two years of making content since the last time I did this, and there's still so much farther for me to go. So if you go on to enjoy the video, please consider subscribing help me along my journey and secondly if you enjoy this video i want me to do 200 days in this world well 3k likes and we will get right on that there's something really special about starting a skyblock world for the first time so let me give a tiny bit of information first things first as you could probably tell by all the widgets on the screen i am streaming this on my twitch twitch.tv slash haven and if you're interested to watch me live stream occasionally i'll put a link in the description below secondly as this is a wii let me just quickly introduce my friends on the left is mr gets owned otherwise known as andrew and on the right we have vulcar aka marvin it's time for us to get moving on day one andrew got onto the tree i collected some seeds and then I expanded the island with the dirt and then very easily didn't struggle at all making a cobblestone generator and after breaking the last log on the tree we waited for a sapling and waited and waited until there was only four leaf blocks left and uh well after these four leaf blocks were broke we actually got two apples and uh zero saplings Huh. So uh, if this was the original Skyblock or Skyblock 2.0, we'd actually have to restart. Luckily, we are actually playing in Skyblock version 4.0, meaning around the Skyblock lies eight more smaller islands, each representing a different biome, and most of them have a tree representing that biome. So Marvin got to work mining some cobblestone, got me 44 in total, and 84 slabs later, I started bridging towards the jungle island. We also realized we made another mistake. I'm gonna say we, because I don't want to take fault for it. I forgot to uh, turn on the sun. It was at the moment permaday. It was never going to carry on. Just going to quickly fix that. I think things were going great so far. I got about halfway to the jungle island before getting 48 more cobblestone, where I was 100% confident of making it to the new island. That was wrong. Though a nice little care package from Andrew Getown got me to the island. I got me some melons and then began cutting down the jungle tree. Andrew got a sapling pretty quickly and then I grabbed the extra dirt, also got an extra sapling and well, that was the first day, which is really sad. To think about all the troubles we had on day one. Only 99 more to go. The plan was on day two was to extend the island. We wanted to make a better cobblestone generator because, well, in previous attempts, probably mentioned this is not our first attempt at this. I actually learned how to make a pretty simple triple cobblestone generator, meaning all three of us would be able to mine cobblestone at the exact same time. It really isn't hard to make either. It only took a little bit of tweaking, but there we were. Now all three of us can mine cobblestone at the same time. Not like I did though. I was too busy being farmer here. The plan was for us to get a mob spawner set up ASAP. A big fear for all veteran skyblocks in later versions is phantoms. They spawn after three nights without any sleep and with very little protection, you need a bed as soon as possible. Best way for us to get a bed would actually be through spiders. So if we create a mob generator, then we should be able to kill a bunch of spiders, get a bunch of string, which of course leads to a bunch of beds. A mob spawner, however, does require an unlimited supply of water. Luckily, the swamp island had a couple of pieces of water for me to grab. And so on day three, I headed towards it. I got there pretty quickly. Would have been more helpful if I actually had the bucket, but we move on. It was worth it. At least I got an oak sapling on the way back. I made an unlimited water supply just in time for me to not be able to sprint anymore. Really need to grow those cops ASAP. And then I began the mob grinder. This is just standard mob grinder. If you've seen someone in Skyblock make a mob grinder before, you've seen everybody make a mob grinder before. So don't mind me just speeding up the footage of me actually building this. I was working so hard, I actually spent all the night up here. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to leave anyway, unless I wanted all the mobs to spawn on here prematurely. And that sounds like a terrible time. Another cobble care package was given to me on day four by Marvin. I can see what he's done for the first four days. Andrew was able to get me a second water source now that I had finished off the roof and I began placing the water. And after finishing off the drop shoot for the fall, I had successfully made the mob spawner by the night. My reward was cookies. That's absolutely a win. The mob spawner was an instant success. We got bones. We got a potato. I basically got full gold armor and that was only within minutes of actually getting the mob spawner. However, it did become a race against time because as soon as I started getting string, the phantoms started spawning. 
Does anybody else get a bit of deja vu about hunking in a little cobblestone shack at night, avoiding phantoms? That, that just me? All right then. Was the day hit on day five, I went straight back to the mob grinder and the grinder was continued to be grind. Though I had one bed that would stop the phantoms from spawning, I also really want to sleep through the night and so we needed to get two more beds as soon as possible. I pretty much just spent all day here and well, it was successful. I got the third bed on the same day. It is worth pointing out that after a single day and a single night of mob grinding, I got 32 levels, which uh, well, that's pretty good. With that completed on day six, I decided my next job was to actually make a base. Now listen, in 100 days videos, I'm so used to letting other people make all the builds, and so I decided it was time for me to actually give it a go. It did require us to make a new platform though, and so I started making that one, and then I started grinding some spruce wood. I had a very basic idea on what I wanted of the base, but you know, I'm gonna play around with it a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, the next few days starting from day seven was pretty much me just working on the house. There's not really much for me to input here other than I started the frame on day seven, and it was pretty much more of the same on day eight. I was just messing around with a few designs. Listen, I'm, I'm not a great builder, so I needed to mess around a little bit. Definitely got some judging eyes, I'll tell you that one. And by day nine, I can proudly say I had completed one wall. God, I suck at this. I decided to take a break, would you believe? I wanted to kill some more mobs. Listen, it's a lot easier to, you know, murder the mobs and kill stuff than make stuff look good. Probably why I don't do it often. I'll give you three guesses on what I did on day 10. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, that's right. I started building. I would show you more, but I did actually forget to record most of the day. However, on day 11, I finished the walls. It did take all day messing around with the designs, but I was pretty satisfied with it overall. It was also this point that Andrew and Marvin decided that they wanted to contribute to this build. Andrew offered to make the interior of the house look good, whilst Marvin offered to make the roof look good. And listen, after all this work, I was completely done with building. So let's uh, let's move on a little bit. We're just gonna skip day 12 because nothing really happened on day 12. However, on day 13, we began heading to the islands around the sky block. I headed towards the dark oak forest where I actually spotted a floating pillager outpost. There are a couple of structures hidden in the void in this world, which we'll come back to later. And also in the dark oak tree, there was a chest holding 10 obsidian. I did spend the rest of the day waiting around the dark oak tree to hope that four saplings would drop, but sadly that just never happened. But on day 14, my babes, my bros, my non-binary souls, you do not have to worry as we got birch. You know, everybody's favorite wood, I, I guess. I then began making a little platform to put the nether portal on. On day 15, I began the process of trying to light the nether portal. I lit myself on fire. Don't want to talk about it. And decided to pass the time with a little bit more mob murder. It was also this point that Marvin had completed the roof to my house, and we now have 90% of the home done. Even got to sleep in it that night. We finally have a nice little skyblock home. The portal was instantly lit on the morn of 16. I jumped into the nether to find a updated nether. Just just like the overworld, the nether has a couple of islands around it, basically representing each biome. I'm not ready to travel to any of them just yet, so we can come back to those later as too, but I will point out the nether fortress, if you can call that a nether fortress. We also got ourselves a chicken. Make some, uh, make some fried chicken, get us some, get us some KFC and, and some chips. I don't really know what I'm saying at this point. After that, it was just more mob murder. I wanted to get an iron pickaxe for the gold blocks from the nether portal and I already had one iron ingot from a zombie from earlier, so now we just need to get two more. I was still grinding on day 17 where I got a second iron ingot and I also got a second chicken. We didn't need the second chicken considering that chickens always lay eggs, but it's just going to be a lot quicker to save this chicken and just breed them manually. After that, it was just more mob murder. And then on day 18, after pretty much spending most of the day grinding some more, we got a third iron ingot. I made the iron pickaxe, I mined the gold blocks, and it was time to work on our next project. And who boy, was it a big one. So I have a story to tell on day 19. Let's be 100% transparent right now. This is not our first attempt at the 100 day survival in Skyblock as a trio. In fact, this is actually our third. For those who are interested and want to watch one of the original attempts, I will link Marvin's video in the description. He made a wee try to, and I just thought, you know, go check it out if you want to. Because of the first two attempts though, we did actually learn a couple of things. Firstly, the Never Fortress that I pointed out earlier, in both attempts, we never saw a blaze spawn at 
any point. We survived to about day 30 both times, and in both scenarios, a blaze never spawned. We actually originally thought this was because we moved the map from 1.16, I believe it was, to 1.18, and that could potentially affect the spawn rate, but we wasn't 100% sure. So at this time, we didn't think it was possible for us to get blaze rods. Some of you are probably wondering why that's important, and that's because we want villagers. The potential of trading with villagers just opens up such a variety in a skyblock world, and so we wanted to get it done as soon as possible. However, the only way to get villagers in this world is to cure a zombie villager, and the only way to get a zombie village cured is to get a weakness potion, and the only way to get a weakness potion is, of course, to get blaze rods. So there's probably people in the comments right now thinking, how do I cure a zombie villager without potions? Well, during our time, we came up with a couple of theories. Theory one was actually to try and trade for it. For one reason or another, one or two of us was under the impression that wandering mm -hmm. traders could potentially give us blaze rods. However, after doing a little bit of research, we found out that wasn't the case, and so we quickly moved on. Theory two was actually to use strays. We don't know what strays are. They're the ghost skeleton things that can spawn in most snowy biomes. And if they shoot you, they can hit you with a weakness or slowness arrow. So we had the idea of potentially getting a stray to shoot a zombie villager with a weakness arrow and then giving it a golden apple to cure it. I imagine there's already some Minecraft experts who already realized the problem with this plan because after doing a bit more research again, it turns out that strays only shoot slowness arrows and we was unfortunately under the impression that it actually gave weakness arrows. And then we came on to our final theory, which was to use witches. <laughs> so, as most people know, when you are fighting a witch, in its own defense, a witch will throw potions at the players. What kind of potions do you ask? They can throw poison, they can throw harming, they can throw slowness and you guessed it they can throw weakness so what we'd have to do was to trap a witch in the spawner then we'd have to trap a zombie villager in a spawner we'd have to get the witch to weaken the zombie villager give the golden apple to the zombie village to cure it and then separate them oh and to make things even better we'd have to do that twice to get two villagers and just to make things as difficult as it can be we only got two gold blocks from the nether which means we only had two golden apples to give. We only had one shot to get this right, or else we are completely soft-locked away from villagers. And so I introduce you what I called Operation Z. We did actually get a witch straight away on day 19, and I began making a platform for her underneath. Now the plan was to grind the grinder as much as possible to hope that a zombie villager would spawn. I grinded the mob grinder for all of 20 and did not get a zombie villager. However, on day 21, well, ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a zombie villager. Everything was going great. I just got poisoned. Yeah, I did too. Oh, no! no! No, 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 no! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> what happened? Do you fall? Do you fall and catch yourself in the water? I caught myself in the water. Yes, he oh, did. Oh, oh my! Jesus Christ. I I am not joking. Oh I am not joking. Oh. I was five blocks from falling. I was fi oh. five more blocks. I was done. <laughs> like I said, going great. I then made the platform underneath the grinder much bigger for protection because now we actually have to trigger the weakness potion. We did learn a few gimmicks of the witch. Firstly, they more than likely will only throw a weakness, harming, or slowness potion if a player they are attacking is already poisoned. You just have to be close enough to them whilst you are poisoned. Whether it is a weakness, slowness, and harming potion though, that is completely random. So what we had to do was we had to get poisoned, get close enough to the witch, hope the witch would hit us with a weakness potion, and then give the golden apple to the zombie villager. Very, very simple, right? We started trying to do this on day 21. In fact, it took us all the way until day 22 to make this happen, but then it did happen. The witch finally hit us with a weakness potion. We was able to kill the zombie villager and we eradicated the witch in a what a stupid moment, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. But man, you don't know how much joy it was for us to get a zombie villager under these circumstances. I began making a platform for the villagers on day 23. You may notice that I'm placing invisible slabs right now. Don't worry about it too much. It's just a visual glitch that happens in 1.18. Though we did actually run out of cobble, so I had to mine it a little bit. And then Marvin and Ghetto joined me. Wait, who took the lava? I just made obsidian, dude. No, you didn't. I swear to God. Andrew! I Andrew! Oh my god. So yeah, Andrew, uh, he broke the cobblestone generator. And so on day 23, we no longer have 
lava. Do you think it'd be possible to survive almost 80 days in Skyblock without a cobblestone generator? Like, think about that for a second. Do you think it's possible? Well, I'm gonna quickly repeat myself. Well, let's just let Day One Haven take over for a second. But if this was the original Skyblock or Skyblock 2.0, we'd actually have to restart. Luckily, we are actually playing in Skyblock version 4.0, meaning around the Skyblock lies eight more smaller islands, each representing a different biome, and most of them have a tree representing that biome. Why is this important? Well, another optional challenge for this world is for you to actually start in the Nether, but of course you can't do Skyblock without an infinite way to get blocks. You can't make a cobblestone generator in the Nether because you can't place water, but you can make a basalt generator. And what do you need for a basalt? Salt generator, blue ice, and a lava bucket. Andrew is one very lucky boy. Why do you ask? Simple, if we had to restart 23 days in because he ruined our only lava source, I'd have to gut him like a fish. Anyway, also I don't know how it happened, but our cobblestone generator went from a trio generator to a duo generator, but I don't want to mess around with it because we now only have the one source of lava. But since there's only two spots for, you know, cobble to be mined, I uh, had a bit of a sneaky idea. I'll, uh, I'll come back to it later. On day 26, I killed some chickens, I cooked some chickens, the lads and the boys mined some cobble, and yeah, that pretty summed up day 26. Cool. I finished the villager platform on day 27 and got my villager friend into his new home. I then reinstated the mob grind into a fully fledged working mob grinder because it was time for us to get a second villager. Day 28, I got a baby zombie villager pretty much straight away. However, as I killed the witch, I now have to capture him and then get a second witch, which yeah, I have some regrets about that one. I was thinking on day 29, surely it won't take that long. And then on day 30, I was like, oh, Oh no, I did get away with it on day 31 though, thank god. And curing this guy was so much quicker than the first time because we actually knew what we was doing. We got a weakness potion within a couple of minutes. And on day 32, we had cured the second villager. He was also moved to the villager platform. It was time for us to grind some cat otters. I think I got a decent amount. They, they, they enjoyed it, they appreciated how much I gave them. On day 33, I made a composter because I wanted to make a farmer villager. And then I began trading carrots. Oh, so got myself some pies. Don't, don't know why we don't need food. Even got myself some melon trades. I was being a bit of a creep on day 34. I was uh, watching babies be made. Um, should probably move on. And after that, I consulted the villager graph. Basically, I was looking for the best villagers to create to get a couple of extra emeralds. And after comparing a few different options, I decided the best option would be to get a stone cutter. He would trade cooked stone for emeralds. It did, however, require us to sacrifice a piece of iron. That being said, 13 cooked stone for an emerald? Well, don't mind if I diddly do. I finished the day with some more mob grinding, where I got not one, not two, but three pieces of iron in a very short time frame. That's pretty damn lucky if you ask me. On day 35, I made myself a smithing table. We do have to wait for the children to grow, but we are on our way to getting a lot of village traits here. Then it was back to mob murdering whilst I was waiting for stone to cook and babies to grow. I finished the day with a classic haven and to-do board, probably wondering why the to-do board was made with a random assortment of blocks. And the answer was, they were just the blocks that I had at the time. Not, nothing special. I hope, you, I hope you think it looks good at least. I got a toolsmith on day 36. I hate toolsmiths. I either buy bells for an extortionate amount of emeralds, or I buy 8 million hoes and hope that he levels up that way. I decided to just move on to the armor for the time being. Oh yeah, we, we have an armor. I was able to get everybody half iron armor, just a little bit of protection, you never know. And then I spent the rest of the day trading chainmail armor and cooking it for the nugs. I know it's a very terrible way to get iron, but... Eh, I'll take iron any way I can at this point. We actually started a new stream on day 37, so honestly, not much was done. I did begin heading towards an island, but I didn't get there just yet. Basically, the night was about to fall, and so I wanted to head back and take a nap. I returned back to it on day 38, though. I got the mushrooms and stole all the dirt, and then I started heading towards the Savannah Island to get the wood and the dirt there as well. Also, Marvin got a flame bow from a skeleton, which I didn't think was possible, but this is not the first time he has got this in a Skyblock world. I'm starting to question the legitness. Marvin Cheat confirms? On day 39, I tried to breed the villagers a bit more. Unfortunately, at this point, we had actually maxed out the amount of beds that we had. And at some point, one of them broke the mob grinder. And boy, when I tell you we had to get away from it, oh boy, I was able to get a couple more beds. In fact, the armor trader, I was also able to get a couple of diamond armor pieces before the mob grinder blew up again at the end of the day. 
honestly, good day. Day 40, we fixed the mob grinder, and now it was time to max out the armorer. So, Marvin got some leg, and we're really close to maxing him out. He also slaughtered our first iron golem of this series. He'll be the first of many. I just hope they don't get their revenge. Also got Andrew some pantaloonies. I'm not gonna lie, on day 41, in my notes, I've just put the word trades. So, I'll let you know exactly what it did on 41. 42 and 43 was basically me doing the same thing. I took a break from trading, but to head towards the, um, <coughs> never fortress. Mm, sure. Inside the fortress, there was actually some never warts, so I grabbed that. And then I headed to the top of the fortress where I actually found a portal leading directly into the end. Definitely on the to-do list, but for the time being, I'm going to cover it up. I really don't want someone to fall in here accidentally. And then I extended the platform at the never fortress to try and get some pigmen and piglins to spawn for a potential gold farm in the future. As I was building it, something incredible happened. A, a blaze spawned. Huh. Huh! It was at that point I realized that this entire fortress was set up on half slabs, meaning that stuff would never spawn on it. Which is the reason why after three skyblock attempts, we never saw a blaze. It also means Operation Z, aka trapping multiple witches and zombie villagers, was a complete waste of time and we spent about 10 days doing it i was trying to make life a little bit easier for us on day 44 we only ever had one furnace and it was a slow cooker at that and so i decided to make an auto cooker it was basic as can be and it did require quite a bit of iron to make hoppers but it is definitely going to help us in the long term here i also bought everybody diamond helmets and then i set up a wart farm which we never used. The next job on the list on day 45 was to move the dirt to a new section to potentially allow animals to spawn. And also to move the farms out of the way. We kept we kept breaking them by accident. It wasn't my fault. I had a genius idea of creating a dirt trail to the new dirt area. But then I realized that that was going to take forever. And so instead I made a piston. I just thought I could manually push a grass block over there to save time. It did take me a second to figure out how a piston works though. We'll, uh, we'll ignore that one. I carried it on the next day on day 46. Making the dirt platform. And then I planned to move the center dirt over to the new dirt. With losing as little dirt as possible. And so I put a bunch of slabs underneath the original dirt blocks. After collecting all of the dirt on day 47, I made the dirt platform as big as possible. It's honestly not massive, but eh, it'll do. Also, these villager kits were really interested in this one particular villager. I still don't know why that would be. And then I went back into the nether. We still had a few pieces of gold left over from those blocks and I decided it was time for me to try and trade them with a piglin. The idea was if I could get some gravel, I could get some flint, and then I could make some fletchling villagers to potentially get a lot of emeralds via sticks. We sadly did not get any, which was really unfortunate. However, we did get some leather. And so though we can't get a fletching, we can at least get a librarian. We did neglect to grow sugarcane in this world and so we had no paper. I began to make one at this point, but I mean, kind of said that it took it this long, not gonna lie. And then it was about playing the waiting game, murdering some mobs. I just, I need the sugar cane, so may as well murder some stuff. I returned to Never on day 49 because I wanted some blaze rods for a brewing stand. Not actually for potions, would you believe, but I wanted a cleric villager. I did take out a few, but it took me a while to actually get a blaze rod. I'm not sure if there's any particular reason why, but hey, I got one in the end. And then the glory that could have happened, cows began spawning on the little grass island that we had. I cannot tell you how amazing it is to actually have cows on this island, but by the end of the day, we had a nice little platform, they made a nice little fenced area, and honestly, I was really happy with with everything that happened on day 49. Moving on to day 51, I made a couple of walls and decided to try and make the path to the fortress a little bit safer for us whilst we're traveling towards it. It nearly resulted in my death, so uh, you know, no biggie. And then I decided to get the hecaroonie out of the nether and began bone mealing some crops again. Still a couple of pieces of armor we all need, so you know, still got some work to do. And with the cleric got on day 52, it now allowed us to trade rotten flesh. And because of the mob spawner, well, safe to say that we had a couple of pieces of rotten flesh, just a, just a couple, just enough for me to be able to buy two more diamond chest plates. And with those two more diamond chest plates, we now had full diamond armor each. Not too shabby for 52 days in Skyblock. I must say, I'm kind of impressed on how well we're doing here. On day 53, we, um, uh, huh. And then on day 54, began a free day adventure. Who's ready 
to go and slay a dragon. We actually really wasn't bothered about the levels we could get or even the dragon egg. However, the only way for us to obtain diamonds in this world is actually through end cities. And of course, to get to an end city, you've got to kill a dragon, which will give the portal. Ah, I don't think I need to explain this. You guys know how to get to end cities. So admittedly, the dragon fight was actually quite intense. Though we did have the armor to survive a couple of hits, we only had at most power two bows and stone swords. This was admittedly quite an underprepared fight. We were still decently confident that we could do it. And honestly, things were going really well but, uh, until uh, yeah. he's about to start like triggering away. So just get ready for any move. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. I. Oh. Ooh, big water bucket, let's go. I... I wasn't concerned at all. I don't know what you're saying. And then the dragon was killed and he dropped one giant XP ball, which I, uh, you know, may have quickly yoinked. I mean, uh, <laughs> sucks to be them. Only had 91 levels. I mean, he really, really wasn't that much. And now it was time for us to split up. Those two had some other jobs to do. And so they headed back to the sky block. While I was going to enter the end to find myself an end ship. I was really hoping it wouldn't take that long. Oh. Alright then, I got a lot of really good gear, just some upgraded tools and diamond armor, even got myself a couple of shulkers as well. And then when I entered the ship, I got myself some diamonds, I got myself an elytra, and of course, I got myself the dragon head as well. And with that, it is time for me to head home. I offered my freebies to the lads. They, of course, accepted. And there's probably a few people that was thinking, well, Haven, while she was in the end city, what were the lads and the boys doing? And, uh, well, uh, yeah, so we need... <laughs> Are you just not going to comment on this here? Like... <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> like, when did no, you make this? What the fuck? It's right in his face. I don't understand. I didn't know it. No. I legitimately didn't look. No. no, you were supposed to not let him see. What no. Legitimately, he's right in front of it. Like, yeah, if you watch my stream, I didn't actually look at any point. Did I not look to the left? I literally wow. was always looking over here, looking like Let that. Let him live. I finished off the day by making a lectern. Why? Because it was time for us to get a level 30 enchanter set up, and the quickest way to get bookshelves is to trade them with a librarian. On day 57, it was back to the grind for the emeralds. I only need 15 bookshelves. I don't think it'll take that long. I mean, I was able to get free by the end of day 57. And on day 50, I actually got a little bit of gold from the end cities as well. And so I tried to trade them for gravel again. This time, luckily, getting quite a bit of gravel. I was really happy about it. And what I also remembered was that one of the shovels that I got in the end city actually had fortune free on it. And so after breaking all of the gravel, I now had enough flint to make six fletching tables. Six fletching tables, six fletchers, means that I will never ever run out of options when it comes to trading sticks. Remember when I said it wasn't gonna take me that long? Well, here I am on day 59, where I now had 12 bookshelves. This is, uh, this is taking a minute. I'm just gonna skip day 60 because it was on day 61 where we got our 15th bookshelf. I made a new platform for the enchanter. I grabbed some obsidian from from the never and after 61 days we had a full enchanter set up didn't however have any lapis so we could not use it go us guys uh, i uh, i have done something really important i need you guys to come and join me on the crafting table okay i bring okay. gifts from a far land <gasps> we all now have diamond hose. I headed to the sand island to set up a platform to catch the sand. And it kind of felt wrong doing it this late. Like, in original Skyblock, the sand island is right there. But in our case, it's so far away that it actually took us 60 days to do this. I, I don't know. It just felt a bit weird. On day 63, I have another story to tell. Just like the pillager outpost, just like the Never Fortress, would you believe that there is a dark oak mansion floating around in this world? How are you meant to find it i hear you ask well originally you're supposed to trade for it with a cartographer and so on 63 i decided to grind a cartographer to see about getting a dark o mansion map also is anyone else really disappointed that a void in a map is the same color as cobblestone so the maps just look terrible i think that's just me but that, that really sucks we figured out how to get lapis on day 64 we could actually trade for it with a cleric it is a one for one trade which is just horrifically bad rates at least i got myself a looting sword looting two huh no not perfect but i guess i also added another hopper to the furnace cooker 
thing. This way we can now put coal or charcoal, should I say, into this one. And it would automatically fill that one up when it was running low. I am going to skip day 65 and 66 because honestly, not a lot happened. However, on day 67, we noticed a mistake. You see, the sheep, after cutting their wool another time, we realized that they weren't growing. And the reason was, well, when you make a giant spruce tree, it replaces the grass with this non-grass. And we kind of accidentally covered all of the grass. And somebody came up with the genius idea of getting another piston and moving a block from one of the far islands back to the center island to regrow the grass. I wonder who's going to end up being stuck doing it. God damn it. I also lost a bloody piston. How does that happen? I'm still moving the block on day 68. Where, did, did I just lose a second? How do you lose two pistons, Danny? You are better than this. This one mistake has actually technically cost us free iron. We have so little of it. We can't afford to keep losing it. On day 69, well, did you know that Marvin made a thing on the roof? Because uh, Marvin made a thing on the roof. Anyway, I was able to get the grass sorted. And then we was clearing up the non-grass when, uh, <laughs> well, are we, oh, I'm so angry right now. What? We have what? grass right here. On day 70, I tried to get a different looting sword. This one made out of iron. It took me a few attempts, but unfortunately I failed running out of lapis. And then moving on, I decided to see if I could find myself a sea biome in the F3. Main reason was because I would really like to just make a nice little pool that has some dolphin, fish, and squids in. It really did not take me that long. I began making the cobblestone pool for them, and well, this is going to take another couple of days, isn't it? I carried on the pool on day 71 when, well, it happened. The lads were starting to ask a couple of questions. They was thinking, Haven, I haven't seen you mind cobble in a while. Let's let's compare our cobble counter and uh well, the uh, the chick was up, I was um uh, I was uh, I was slacking a little bit. Why are Andrew and Jared always the cobble slaves? Um <laughs> Drew, wait, can we do a cobble a check question. of of uh <laughs> I don't think we should. I, I don't think we should. Let's do, let's do a cobble check. Let's do a cobble uh, check. I have forty seven hundred probably TK. four thousand seven hundred uh forty six cobble. I can't f find cobble. It should be the highest thing you've mined. <laughs> Wait, just <laughs> okay. I don't know so, for damn. Sorry, sorry. How much did you say you find on Drew? <laughs> Four thousand seven hundred forty-six. Marvin, how much have you mined? I want to probably like you five first. or six k. <laughs> I, I find three hundred and twenty-seven. <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy, we really are the cobble slaves. <laughs> Oh, you guys have done is... so much mining. I've done sh. Wow. <laughs> That's I've actually been, crazy, dude. I've done 5.2k. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't believe it's taken you guys 70 days to realize that I've stopped mining cobble from day five. I haven't mined any cobble since day five. Like, the amount of times, I, I remember last stream, I had called me out for I'm like, hey, can, why do you guys pass me free cobblestone? And I was just like, why don't you just go mine it? And I'm like, I can't say why. So yeah, I, I really appreciate you guys doing all the other things. <laughs> A dolphin! Oh, the dolphin just f died! Oh. No! Oh. It just Died. Day 72 and 73, I'm not gonna lie, I was just still working on the pool, so to not bore anybody, let's move on. And then on day 74, well, I decided to take a flight. You know how we're supposed to get a map to find the Dark Oak Mansion? Well, if I'm being 100% honest with you, in one of the failed attempts, we already found the Dark Oak Mansion. I just originally wanted to do it legitly so we could find it that way, but then I was just like, eh. And so I flew over to it. I honestly had a couple of scares. I mean, it is actually kind of scary to be here by myself. I'm so used to doing this with other people. However, I was able to hold out. I got myself an enchanted golden apple. And then afterwards, I actually got a totem of undying, which was pretty good. Well, it's time to leave. So here we are on day 77. What happened to day 75 and 76, I ask? Well, I really don't want to talk about it. Also, I got new long sleeves on my arm. I mean, that's that's cool, right? Everybody, everybody, look at my sleeves. They're really cool. No one, no one liked my sleeves. Anyway, I really need to finish off the sea thing. I had the walls completed by day 78. I also found a really quick way to cover the entire pool with water by placing them into these corner blocks. The water will automatically fill, and I just have to keep going up layer by layer. And that way, we have an unlimited water supply. Now that that was complete on day 79, I was interested in the possibility of getting Wither Skull. We now had the 
looting swords and we had the platform for the Nether Fortress, was it possible to get enough withers, skeletons to get a wither skull? I was going to check it out. And then I hit a pigment and ruined everything. I, I swear it was an accident. I had to clear them out, unfortunately. And also I had to clear out the blazes. Listen, not much spawns here, but just because of how small it is, it definitely makes things a bit tense at times. I expanded the platform as much as I could at this point, but then I decided to leave for fear of my own life. If pigment starts spawning again, I'm probably going to die in here. On day 80, I just ran around. So, uh, let's go to day 81 where I tried to get a mending trade. There's nothing more important for your armor and tools than mending, and so I began the villager manipulation. And listen, if you've ever done villager manipulation, you know how long this usually takes. Here we are on day 82 where I got it, and I felt very lucky that I got it so soon. Anyway, it was back to the emerald grind for me. It's kind of a recurring theme here. After killing my 200 iron golem on day 83, we finally had enough iron for an anvil. When I tell you we've been trying to do that since about day 30, it, trust me, that's how long we've been trying to get this one. Anyway, it was back to trading for me. I don't really have much of an update for the likes of 84 and 85. Really, it was just more trading. I did get an advancement for getting every single diamond tool, which was pretty cool. And since I was in the process of getting the custom advancements in this world, on day 86, there is another one that requires you to go to every small island in the world. That is both the overworld and the nether. I went to all the overworld ones, and so I went into the nether and began bridging. Did not take me long at all to get to every one of the islands, and I had now the advancement. And when I returned, turned on day 87. Well, you know how when I left to go to the end to get the elytra and stuff, they made Among Us sus? Well, when I returned this day... What's good? You'd make it the Red Among Us! Yeah, baby! I knew you Wait, were gonna what? do that! Yeah! Hey, it was originally Kabul. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. That's sussy! On day 88, I actually had my own funny idea to add to the Among Us statue, but it did require me to get some black wool. I'm very sorry, Squids. You uh, you will honestly not be worse. I mean, does anyone even like Squids? It may have taken all of day 89, but oh man, was it worth it. And with 90 days completed, with the fact we already had the anvil, we now decided we wanted to make an iron farm. I, I don't know why. We just really, really wanted to make an iron farm. I'm not going to explain exactly how to make an iron farm. If you want to know, then just put it into YouTube or something. But what you do need to know is that we need a name tag to do it. Best way to get a name tag was through a maxed level librarian. And so what I started doing was buying a lot of bookshelves and then trading them back for books. It's a terrible way to lose all your emeralds, but at least this way you would be able to get an unlimited XP grinder on a single villager. The name tag was acquired on day 91 and I gave it the perfect name. Now what we need to do was to get three villagers over to the iron farm to trap them forever. I think he realized what was going on and so he tried to do a rudder. Almost like he doesn't want to be a prisoner for the rest of his life. What a, what a rude person. The second villager really didn't mind that much. And then on day 92 when we got the final villager in the slot we just now had to get a zombie in there. Since we had to wait until the night I decided to improve the Among Us sus with some glass. That was a, that was a good day for me. And and then the zombie was trapped and I gave him the name tag. I'd also like to let everybody know that Marvin has a message for you all. Give Haven Twitch Prime? Well, I mean, if you no! want to. <laughs> no! I'm not going to complain if you do. Fuck! Guy, he said it. He oh! said it. Thanks, Marv. You're such a good guy. On day 93, we was at the final week. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, my God. Oh my He's going Haven. in. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god! I accidentally freaking left clicked. Well, that is uh, huh? That is uh, that's pretty crazy. That's pretty insane. Uh, um, day ninety three, boys. Oh my god, I'm sorry. That sucks. So Andrew died. Huh. So I'm going to be 100% honest with you right now. You deserve that for making it this far in the video. When we started this video, we had an agreement that if one of the three of us died, all three of us would start again. That's the reason why we are on our third attempt, because the first time Marvin died and the third time I died. However, well, <laughs> there was a couple of reasons why we just decided that that wasn't going to happen this time. First one was that the two people actually making content from this was me and Marvin. Andrew was just sort 
sort of along for the ride. He wasn't making a video and only streamed periodically. Secondly, we're on day 93. We're not starting again. Screw that! On day 94, I got revenge. Dealing with the murderer in question, we made a new platform where a grave was going to be held. I, of course, put an iron block on there because I just thought that'd be kind of funny. And then, as a final touch, I added the dragon head. A final little ceremony for our friend. On day 95, I decided that, you know what? If if Andrew is going to die to the iron farm, I'm at least going to finish the iron farm for him. Now, he was actually watching a tutorial on exactly how to do this. I don't know. And so I just thought that if I could potentially fix it, that's that's all I'm hoping for. Despite the fact that it was pretty, pretty scuffed, this actually worked at the end. I wasn't going to complain about it. I was able to finish it off on day 96 with some campfires and some hoppers. And it actually works perfectly. It only caused Andrew's life will say no bigger. Day 97 was actually quite the interesting day. Just the past the time I went fishing where a single pillager spawned. It just happened to be the pillager with the flag. When I of course murdered him, not thinking much about it, I may have accidentally triggered a raid in the Skyblock Islands. This was uh, this was slightly concerning. Never thought I'd be dealing with a raid on day 97 of a 100 days video in Skyblock. Yep, here we are. Honestly, most of the raid was fine. It really wasn't that much of an issue. That is until the Evoker spawned and then they spawned all the Vexers. Definitely a little concerned towards the end there, but we was able to hang out to the end and defeat the raid. On day 98, I went to check out the Iron Farm. The steps that led up to the Iron Farm that we built was unfortunately causing Iron Golems to spawn on there. And so I gently removed our Iron Golem friend off of it and then removed the steps themselves. Then I got myself some kitties. You see that black one? His name is Buttercup. He's a... That's a good kitty. On 99, we actually finally headed to the Amethyst cave thing that has been down there that probably some of you have noticed throughout the video. We was able to get a couple of crystals to make a spyglass. We just need to get copper. How we was going to get copper was not something that either of us took into consideration. And so the dreams of the spyglass were sadly over. And then I decided it was too much for me. And so I committed Sudoku. But I lived! The final day. Day 100 was here. We had one final tour, looking over everything that we did. Whether it was the basics, the most complex things we did, most of the things that you'll see here you probably may have not noticed or I may have not even mentioned in this video. So, again, if you want to see a full version of this, Twitch in the future, that's all I can really say. We poured our heart and soul into this world, so I really, really hope you enjoyed the video, nevertheless. Well, Marv, do you want to one last time take a nap? One last time cuddle together. Damn. One last time cuddle together. But uh, if we're going to do that, Marvin, we got to uh, yeah, put the beds gotta... together. Damn right we do. Who, care who cares if it's asymmetrical? Who, who cares? cares? We just want the one. It's the last together. day. It doesn't matter. Exactly. It's not what gay. What a one.